Hello, here we are going to knit together Katrin's sweater. In this video tutorial, you'll get all the important instructions that will help you to knit the sweater. I do video tutorials because I believe that this is the easiest way to understand how to read the pattern and not to be afraid to start knitting a big project. Let me start by explaining shortly about the construction of the sweater. We start from the neck that we knit using a tabular cast on, then we do an elevation to make it more anatomic friendly, so we will have a slightly longer backside. Then we work on the chart where I will explain the color work and how to read the chart. All main points will be covered in the video, but you will also have a lot of independent knitting after learning these points. So I don't cover every single row, but rather show you the idea so you learn on the way new things and maybe new tricks too. After we finish the yoke, we separate the sleeves and body parts and knit them separately. In this part, you learn how to do the creases and how to bind off the rib part with a needle so you get a nice looking rib edge. This pattern is not for free, uh, because unfortunately I cannot afford to make all patterns for free, but I'm gladly explaining to you how to knit it. So if you like the pattern and you find my explanations good enough for you to start and finish this project, feel welcome to buy the pattern. I also appreciate any donations and even more your likes and comments. All the general information about yarn, gauge, tools and sizes you can find in the description below, as well as in my profile on Etsy in Ravelry. Let us start from the very beginning of the pattern. For this project I was using a tubular cast on. I will show you how to do it and would recommend you to try, maybe take a, a test attempt, so you can get a bit of understanding about the idea of this cast on. If you are not willing to try, just knit a standard neck the way you are used to knitting. So in the pattern you find 5 sizes. I will knit size S small and therefore all numbers that I need from this pattern are in the first place. For the neck it is set. I need to take a color A, which is white in my case, and cast on 96 stitches. And here please be attentive. 96 stitches you will cast on for classic cast on. Then you take 3.5 mm needles and simply cast on the number of stitches you need for a size. Then you simply follow the instructions and knit a simple rib, one knit, one purl stitch. However, if you want to try tubular cast on, you have to divide this number into two. So if it is set 96 stitches, it means I want to cast on 48 stitches. And what is important here to pay attention to is that I use here 4.5 mm needles, so bigger needles I have, not 3.5 mm. Moreover, I need to take a waist thread approximately the same thickness or can just simply use a color B. And with using this color, needles 4.5 mm, I cast on 48 stitches. Ideally, it is a contrast thread. If you don't have short needles, you can use double pointed needles, doesn't really matter. I will also add an extra stitch at the end to join the round jogglers. So I join the round and make sure that my edge is not twisted. And then I move the left stitch, uh, or the very first stitch, to the right needle and slip over the next stitch and tighten the thread. So it will not be a big stretch here. I can make a knot to tighten them and then I will get pretty good and even circle. The next step here is to take color A, or the main color, and next three rows I will do purl stitches. What is very important here is to knit pretty loosely. Try not to knit too tight, just leave some space for every single stitch. It is important because we want to have a neck stretch enough for our hat. 
If you tighten too much, you might not be able to pull your head through the neck afterward. If you need too tight, uh, you might take bigger needles, for example. But here you just need to try it yourself and figure out how it will work for your knitting style. When you're ready with three purl rows, it is time to double the number of stitches up to what we have in the pattern. I'm still using my needles 4.5 mm. I do one purl stitch and then I pick up a loop or stretch here from the very first row. Um, it is placed right under my first stitch. I pick up it uh, the way I can make a neat stitch from it. As well as before, your knitting has to be really relaxed, so don't tighten the thread. I do another purl stitch and then again pick up the loop and make a knit stitch. I have to keep doing this way until the end of the row, so after every purl stitch I do a knit stitch from the first row and this way I double the number up to 96 stitches. When the first row is ready here, I can cut off the contrast extra thread. Just uh, be very careful doing it and don't cut your main thread, be attentive. For the rest of the neck I can either continue with needles 3.5 mm or as I do here keep knitting with 4.5 mm needles to have a wider neck opening. So let me keep ribbing the next rows repeating one purl and one knit stitch for 4-5 cm. When 4-5 cm of the neck is ready, I need to change the needles to 4.5 mm in the next row, so I do one row in uh, the stocking stitch after the neck is ready. And I insert a marker here to see exactly where is the beginning of the row. Next row I need to increase evenly 24 stitches. To do this I go to the web and find a knitting calculator to help me calculate how to distribute increases more or less evenly. I insert the number I currently have, 96, and the number I need to increase, 24 stitches. I get the instructions here. Two knit stitches, then I have a repeating part of a one increase and four knit stitches that I have to repeat 23 times. At the end I also do one increase and two knit stitches. Let me do it. It's an increase you can either do a yarn over that you need to knit as a twisted knit stitch next row or you can do as me uh, lift up the loop from the middle 
uh, or before or after the stitch and knit twist it right away so it will be an increase Find the number you need to increase in the pattern and using the calculator you will also get your instructions on how to increase here evenly. When I finish with increases, I have to start with an elevation. This part is optional, but I think better to do. Actually, it is also not especially difficult as I explained it to you. What we will do basically is to need shorter rows forward and back that will let us have longer backside and thus make the whole sweater more anatomic friendly. Following instructions in the pattern, first I have to do is to need 15 stitches. That is what I do. Then I turn the knitting and will purl until the beginning of the row and then 15 stitches or 30 stitches altogether. If I just turn and do purling right away, then I get a big gap in between stitches. Therefore, here's a special way to turn the knitting. I hold my working thread in front of the stitch and slip it into the right needle. At the same time, I'm wrapping the needle until I see that the stitch became a kind of double stitch. So I actually have to hold the thread pretty tight now and um, while making the next purl stitch. This way I avoid holes in my knitting. Next I purl until the beginning of the row and 15 stitches in addition. Here I turn my knitting again and again holding the thread in front I slip the next stitch and wrap it around the needle until it looks like a double stitch. That is the only important moment here. Then I knit back to the beginning of the row and after I do 30 stitches. For your size it might be another number, you have to check it in the pattern. When I reach the stitch that became double in the previous row, I knit it as one through the front loop, so as an ordinary knit stitch. When I reach 30 stitches, I turn my knitting again, make a double stitch here toward holes and purl the next stitches. So I hope you get the whole idea of these short rows that we just knit back and forth forming the elevation. When I get through all the elevation instructions, I will see it on the back of my knitting. When I get to the double stitch on my way, I also purl it as an ordinary purl stitch.
to finish, I do one row of stocking and stitch and work all double stitches I meet on my way. Congratulations! Even if we have knitted just a small part of the whole sweater, there were many technical details. Next video, we go through the yoke chart and see how we work with it. See you next video!